Hey everybody, today's topic is a popular one, one that's been going on since probably the dawn of mankind. And that topic is, is humanity getting smarter or is humanity getting dumber? Human intelligence over a long period of time. Now, I have heard conflicting reports, a lot of studies coming out that people are going um, higher in IQ over the long period of time. I believe it's called the Flynn Effect. And then I hear a lot of different argumentation from the other, other side of the aisle saying that people are getting dumber and there are a lot of YouTube videos to show that, that these people have some uh, base in reality to have that opinion. And I would like to go over what I believe, and that is that I believe people are getting dumber. And the reason why, I'll just give it to you right now, and I'll explain more in depth after the intro here, is I believe that we just simply don't have to be. Okay, but uh, before I really dive into it, I just kind of want to define intelligence, uh, what the Oxford de de uh, definition is, and then maybe a little bit of what culture thinks it is. I think that there's a little bit, they're pretty much the same, I believe, but there's probably a little bit of variation. I just want to make sure that we have the same definition when I am moving forward, because I don't want to open the doors to any arguments that aren't about what I'm talking about. So the dictionary definition from Oxford is the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills, intelligence. The ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. That is the uh, definition that I work with, and that is what I think of when I think of intelligence. You hear a lot, there's a difference between intelligent, like smart people and educated people, like street smarts and book smarts. And essentially what they're saying is that there's a lot of people who have experience in the field in real life, and they do really well. They have a lot of education about um, real life situations, and then there's book smarts, and there's people who have been educated they they retain a lot of knowledge but they don't have experience to really back that up so i decided to go a little bit into the weeds to see what maybe some other opinions might be of what intelligence might be in case that i'm off base so here we go how would you define it and what it means to be smart and slash intelligent so then the top vote is i've met doctors on the golf course admit I've met doctors on the golf course that admit they are just average people who have better memory and interested in biology and helping people. I grew up with a friend who became a brain surgeon and we knew he was smart in fifth grade. The most knowledgeable people at my firm had parents who are in trade and have 20 plus years experience in a single industry. There's intelligence in genetics wise. There's empirical knowledge that's pure hard work. The intelligence I believe separates from others from years of curiosity that think abstractly. They connect single pieces of info from one discipline with totally different subject. They have expanded knowledge and quick recall. They're rational, relative input that contributes towards the subject at hand. They're able to instinctively, instinctually filter and gather complex information in a short amount of time. They think deeper into the details of how things work physiology, psychology, pragmatic, historical, futuristically, financially, and economically. There's several forms of intelligence, but to me, I'm most interested in certain people, in how certain people build companies, provide, and influence the world. So I like that. It's a very um, complex definition with a lot of nuance covered there, but I, I do like my the, the simple definition of intelligence, which is just to acquire and apply knowledge and skills because everything he just said here is just a expansion of that. And it kind of just, you just kind of get lost because anybody who was listening to me read that, uh, how quickly I read it maybe, or, you know, whatever, I doubt you, even I didn't really uh, comprehend that on the first read. And I had to read it a few times to really understand what he was kind of getting at here. He's saying that intelligence comes in different ways and there's many different kinds of intelligence. There's intelligent people who learn quickly, but there's intelligent people who learn a single subject over a long period of time. So they have explored a single, you know, as you look deeper at any one thing, it becomes infinitely complex. You know what I mean? Like down to quantum mechanics, you know what I'm saying? So like atoms and hydrogens, electrons, neutrons, blah, 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 blah. You can break atoms down into further, further parts. And I'm sure once we discover what's at the bottom, we're just going to probably discover more of a world that's there. So you could take like a one by one foot square in a forest and you could probably study that for the rest of your life. But the amount of knowledge that would be there would make you more probably educated than the rest of the world if you dedicated all your time to that one subject. That's what this guy's kind of saying, it seems like. Um, so then let's just run down and just read a couple more comments just so we can kind of get a get a get uh, an idea of what intelligence is. And this guy says, I believe that a truly intelligent person knows... Oh, sorry, fatty dog. I believe a truly intelligent person knows that they don't know everything and is willing to learn. Yes, that's um, a truly intelligent person. Yes, I agree here. That's one of the secret cheat codes of intelligence and you will increase your intelligence simply by saying one thing. I am a, I don't know if I should say it, but whatever. I'm not monetized. I am a retard. So if you believe that you are not very smart, then 
your brain, which operates on a separate mechanism than your consciousness, um, if it is convinced that it doesn't know everything, it should start now to just like analyze the environment you're in and look for problems so that it can start trying to generate solutions and gather information to make you a smarter person. That's just a side take. Sorry, I'll get back right back into the uh, main crux of the video here, which is what is intelligence and why are we getting dumber? So somebody said here, oh, it's deleted. Oh, in a nutshell, the Dunning-Kruger effect explains this pretty well. Those who have little or no expertise in a field or subject don't know what they don't know, which is why they're more confident or ignorant in this case and than someone with a general knowledge of the same topic. And I think he's talking about the Dunning-Kruger. Yes, yes, I may have skipped over that. And this guy said something about only a Sith. That we, there's probably some drama here I just didn't notice. This guy says, in my opinion, intelligence is sometimes the ability to absorb information. More intelligent people will pick things up faster. It is important to separate knowledge from intelligence though he can be very smart yes it is very important to separate two different words that have different definitions from each other correct anyway sorry not <laughs> trying to be super snarky but anyway maybe i'm being a little pedantic but i'm sorry you can be very smart but very uneducated and conversely you can be very educated knowledgeable but not very intelligent which is yes true like our brains operate at different levels if you think about them as parts of a computer different ram you know different pr uh, products different like amd graphics cards gonna be different than an nvidia one so yeah it's it's a good instant that's maybe good nuance to add to the conversation. An intelligent person is someone who is curious, self-aware, conscientious, and willing to learn and revise old belief. People who lack these skills are not intelligent. They may be smart at some things, but they're not intelligent. So, okay, see here, we're getting a lot. I may be being a little semantic and pedantic, but these people are, I think, see, when you start to talk about what is intelligence, everybody has a lot of different definitions, which is, again, why I'd like to refer back to this, the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. I think this is the best definition for intelligence, and we should just be using that going forward. Now, moving on from the definition, I just wanted to talk about the main arguments for the main arguments I've heard for people getting smarter over a long period of time, and the one that keeps coming up and over and over again is the Flynn effect. The Flynn effect is essentially a test testing they did back in the 20th century, where they would measure IQ tests over a long period of time of different samples of different people, and they found that IQ was just going up. Essentially, not much more to say about it. There's lots of other things like they're saying better access to education, uh, better access to diet, which I agree with more or less, but I don't think that's enough to stop why I believe ultimately we are getting dumber is because we don't need to be smarter because, uh, yeah, the main, the main thing I've seen from the culture, uh, that people are getting dumber are from videos like this. And I really only need to play the first 20 seconds here. For you to get a take, so let's just do that real quickly. Do you know how many stars there are on the U.S. flag? Fifty-two. And I'm this. This is going to kind of tie into wh uh, why I believe it helps my uh, argument. Yes. What state is Utah in? Michigan. Okay, so I don't like this question particularly. Uh, I think it's a funny haha -ha dunk, but if you ask a question, what state is Utah in? Your brain is automatically going to think that uh, Utah is not a state because why would you, it's, 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 why would you put that in your question? Why would you put that in your question? What state is Utah in? And you're thinking it's, um, you're not thinking about it. You're thinking about it, about it from an honest way. So it's, it's not entirely this person's fault. Yes. You know what state Utah is in? Yo. Utah, I... To be honest with you, I never heard of that place ever in my life. That's pretty much all I really need to uh, for us to listen here for me to make my points here. Um, so again, they've never heard of Utah because they didn't need to. They should know that Utah is a state, but a lot of people, I think it was like middle school, we were taught about all the states and you had to do the geography map or whatever and maybe multiple times and stuff. And there's a lot, you know, they, they, they're from a city. So when they live in the city, there's like a low barrier of uh, survival, you know, you 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 you're born. Your parents take care of you more or less. Then you go get a job, and then with that job, you can use that to buy all in one like f four city blocks. I imagine if it's like New York City or something along the lines of that, you can go to get your clothes. You can go get your food. Water's free everywhere, and then you just have to make enough money to pay for a place to live, and you know, share that expenses with somebody or something along the lines of that, and you know. That's a very simple environment. And then beyond that, you have a bunch of all the other time is free time. Uh, you don't sense any imminent threats because we live in such a nice bubble, such a nice, you know, all of our, most of our problems have been taken care of. Now, conversely, back in the day, back in the day, back in the Oregon Trail, you'd have 
Homesteaders. Homesteaders, I would imagine, and this is, is going to tie to a lower survival rate too, is uh, homesteaders, I imagine, would have to be, it's, it's life or death. You don't know how to like build a log cabin. You don't know how to cure meat. You don't know how to identify plants. You don't know how to hunt. You don't know how to blacksmith. You don't know how to, you have to be a jack of all trades. So in that environment, you're going to have to have crazy set of skills just to make it you know make it through the day and then you, you add uh taking care of a uh a pregnant wife or something or raising kids and then you know or animal husbandry there's just like farming is very complex and farming was a lot more complex before we invented technology to solve a lot of the problems we had to be smart back then and yes we're better educated we have better access but if there's no need for it why would you that's all I'm saying here. So this is an interesting uh, Reddit post I would like to bring up a little bit here. And we we're talking about crocodiles, and this kind of emphasizes my point a little bit. So this commenter said, okay, the, uh, the question is, intelligence is not a winning, the poll is, intelligence is not a winning survival trait. And most people disagree, but that's, that's interesting in and of itself. But there is a, at least almost half that uh, agree that it's, it's not a winning survival trait. And they, they'd ultimately probably maybe come to the same conclusions I did a little bit. But if we look at crocodiles, so perfect it hasn't bothered evolving for 150 million years. And that's because in my my knowledge that crocodiles only need to be a certain way to get to survive. You know, they have um, a, a certain environment that they can exist in, but they can't exist outside of that environment. Because if they did exist outside of that environment, they would be killed. They would need to invent solutions to be in that environment. So if you believe in evolution, it was born in an environment and it developed a way to survive and it just hyper fixated on that. And if you look at the uh, brain size of a crocodile or their, their ability to have intelligence versus a person, we have a lot more ability to adapt like a higher skill ceiling when it comes to intelligence, but their skill four when it comes to doing what crocodiles do, we won't be able to ever do that because the best at it. But anyways, but my point there is that they have an environment they have no need to go beyond that environment, so they're not getting smarter, even though they're able to get food and thrive in their environments, is what I'm saying here. And then the last little bit here, I just wanted to kind of go over this study. There's plenty of studies about how, um, you know, obesity and all this other stuff, how we're becoming more docile or more like sedentary so that we're gaining more. We have more access to rich foods and stuff like that. So we have this overabundance of um, nutrition. Uh, we have stimulation we have all these things that we just like pamper ourselves and just like really just really live a, a a lush lifestyle compared to the medieval ages like any medieval ager if they were to somehow travel to the future they would think that we're all like gods or something or something like that they would be so insanely blown away from all the uh, wealth that is around here we have so much wealth we have so much of our needs met and any any possible need the way the capitalism kind of is uh operating is that any problem that somebody can find an entrepreneur is uh more or less uh, primed if I want, because a problem is a demand. Like I don't want to mow my lawn. So that if I'm an entrepreneur, I'm 13 years old and I just walk around and I see a bunch of people who don't want to mow their lawns and just, you know, they're going to get paid for solving a problem. So then you just take that, you scale it up to like 330 million people. You have all these people who are preemptively trying to solve people's problems before they can even like imagine them. And then it's packaged to them in a way that it's brought to their attention and they may not even have that problem. But now this type of uh, loop is going to get rid of so many problems that there's like for the majority of us, there's going to be no need for us to have any sort of problem solving um, ability. So then if we believe in evolution over a longer period of time, it'll be like our pinky toes or the appendix or the other parts of the body that just seem to not have a use. It'll just start to degrade. Uh, oh, right. And then obesity here. I also wanted to bring out the point that we're not as muscular. We're not as fit. We're not as strong and people don't value that anymore. But it's because we don't need to be. We don't have an environment. We don't need to chop down trees. We don't need to do manual labor anymore because of the industrial age and the technological age. So the brain is a part of the body. And as you don't use the part of the body, have you ever seen a wheelchair, a person with a paraplegic in a wheelchair have giant thighs, like have really muscular thighs? They can, people who can't move their legs, have you ever seen that? So then again, that's all the main arguments I have about this. Uh, feel free to agree with me or disagree with me. I just kind of wanted to get this video done. This is something I've been really interested in a long time, and it's kind of cool to put it into a video format. And um, feel free to uh, debate me or agree or disagree with me, or maybe we'll get some uh, we'll get some something going or whatever. I hope you just enjoyed. You know, let's just have a nice day. I'm gonna be like Ludwig and say goodbye. You know, goodbye, goodbye, whatever. You know, it's a fun joke. Anyway, see ya.